welcome back. Uh, you know, short sales, foreclosures, huge, huge topic in so many, so many circles. I mean, it's cocktail conversation now. It, you, a couple of years ago, it was who got the best deal or what house you, you ended up buying or who you beat out on a price. And now it seems to be making the rounds in uh, who walked away, who decided to sell, you know, do a short sale, who bought a short sale. I mean, it's real estate is is cocktail conversation. And what what other whatever side of the fence you're on, as far as the moral obligations, one way or another of a of a short sale, certainly up is certainly your prerogative. But uh, you know, West Jones West Jones actually joins us today. Who? One of the you know one of the leading short sale teams in the country. Welcome back, Wes. Ben, thanks for having us on again. Yeah, always a pleasure. Always, always good to see you. Um, ta- you know, I want to just kind of continue that conversation we were having with David and and this this obligation and maybe how you guys help people decide what they should do and what 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 facts are you presenting them to help them make the, a good decision for themselves. You know, I think that David hit it, you know, right there. And, you know, we can't help people make a decision. We can just lay out the facts and their options, you know, what, um, you know, what what they can do about it. And that's all you can do in a situation like this. We can't control the market. We cannot control where values are going. The only thing that we can control is how we move forward. And, you know, what you're looking at as far as looking forward, if we're talking short sales as well, okay, how far am I upside down? What am I going to do about it? Am I going to ride this out? Uh, do I think that the bottom is near and I can I can wait long enough for my value to return? Do I consider short selling the property? Do I just walk away? You know, and those are you know those are really their options. And you know, one of the things that we do and what we have done over the last couple of years is we always tell people, well, hey, you guys need to do the math yourself. You guys need to figure this out. You guys need to figure out. You know, we can help you figure out where your value is at. But then how long is it going to take to recover? You know, do have we hit the bottom? Are we a year or two off? Once we hit the bottom, how long is it going to take to get back to your principal loan amount? And that's one of the easiest ways that we can help people uh, lead them in the right direction. And then it's really up to them on, you know, how they decide to move forward. It's, it's tough to tell somebody to go do something, you know, and, and it, it can be a bit of a slippery slope, I suppose. Somebody brought to my attention... Of course, when their credit score goes down, and then if they lose their job, maybe harder to get another job. I thought it was a pretty slippery slope. I think enough people are going through this where you could explain to any potential employer, "Hey, I got caught in the bad housing market." Yeah, well, when it comes down to, I, I would agree with you on that. When it comes to credit, that is a real slippery slope. And you know what we're really seeing is, you know, that bar for entry has been lowered because so many Americans have been impacted by this housing crisis. So many people have gone through foreclosure, have missed payments, are going through short sales. So you know, you know, we're not seeing those those shiny eight fifty numbers on the credit scores like we're, we're used to. And you know. I've yet I've yet to have a client who's had an issue renting a house or where it's affected their job. Now I know that it can happen if you have a security clearance, um, but those cases are really few and far. For those between. people who want to go get in the CIA, they, yeah, that's right. <laughs> they, you know, you know, a foreclosure can challenge a security clearance, and that's something that you really need to consider if somebody is going to consider a, a strategic default or a short sale. But for your average person, you know. If you've got the cars that you want, if you've got your housing lined up, you know your credit will be impacted. But it's not the end of the world. Life does go on. Tell, talk about the um, the financial decisions. I mean, this calculator, and then you know maybe elaborate a little bit on you know what how people make that decision to stop making payments on their home. Well, sometimes that decision is made for them, and that's about half of the people that we talk to. Um, you know, they do call me with that traditional hardship situation. I lost my job. We've had medical bills. Um, you know, we're going through a divorce. We can no, literally, no longer afford this. So that decision has been made for them. Then and that's about half. You think? I think that's well. That's half of the phone calls that I take. You know, the other half are probably people um, with full time employment. They can make their mortgage payment, and it's whether they choose to make it or not. And they are looking at this as a business decision, much like a bank is looking um, at accepting a short sale or not as a business decision and whether or not it makes sense for them. So, um, you know, I was talking earlier you know, about doing the math, and my partner and I, Brian Gubernick, we came up with the short sale calculator. And you can go to SS for short sale, calculator.com, and we have developed a tool that will – help you do the math. And what you're going to do is um, you're going to put in your address. 
and it's going to pull up your home's value. And it, it's going to be in a value range, so it's not exact, but it gives you a real good starting point. You're also going to plug in your principal loan amount. And then you're also going to plug in your interest rate. And, you know, based on how much your home is worth, it's going to go ahead and uh, let you know how much upside down you are, in, if indeed you are upside down. And if you are upside down, you know, how long is it going to take to recover? It's it's tough math there. What's that? It's tough, tough math to determine if you're upside down or not, right? Well, Property, well I guess at least it's going to give you the you value. Went to, you, went to, you went to U of A, didn't you? I did. Yeah, I that did. is tough math yeah. for you. <laughs> So, oh, there we go, bringing it back. Zinger, football, yeah. <laughs> so, you know what it does, and it gives you three categories. You know, if you're upside down, you know, based on your interest rate uh, and your loan amount, it gives you three categories based on slow appreciation, average appreciation, and quick appreciation. How long it's going to take to come back? Is that one year? Is that two years? Is that three years? And then below that, it's even going to tell you based on how long it's going to be, how much that's going to cost you by paying your principal and interest. And, you know, some of the numbers that we're seeing, you know, it's going to be a long time for a lot of these homeowners. And, you know, when somebody gets that back and, you know, they get that calculation and they say, hey, this could be four years, this could be six years, it could cost me $100,000. Um, just to stand here for the next five years to get back to even. Does this make sense for me? And then you start wondering what people would do with $100,000 if they had it. I mean, whether it's uh, just a little financial security for a lot of people. Yeah, you're right. You know, you guys were talking about it earlier, and it's, you know, a lot of people are making, you know, they have trouble making this decision, and they, you know, maybe believe there's a moral obligation or not. But when you look at whether, you know, putting, you know, providing for your family or feeding the bank their record profits like Bank of America, you know, what makes the most sense to them? Well, and, and I think it's, it goes a little bit beyond just feeding your family. I, it, people can feed their family, but people also have other financial goals and what they want to accomplish. I, I, I think it's more than just bottom lining with the obligations of putting food on the table. I think there's an element of, hey, I also want to help put my kid through school, which is more of a luxury item that you can choose over paying the bank. Yeah, you're absolutely retirement. I mean, there's these. It's it's not just food on the table. It's other other financial choices. There, there's much more to it. You know, there's lifestyle choices. You know, there's putting your kids through college. It's living living the life that you want. And you know, if you are if you get the math back and you're saying, hey, this is going to cost me a hundred thousand dollars over the next five years. Does this make sense? And you know, the answer is, you know, it may not. Yeah, you, you got to really love that house. Yeah, absolutely. Wes, uh, we got about a minute left. Um, is there a certain number? Is there a, is, is there a, a number that you would say, you, you know, how much can you stomach to lose? Is that is that a point, or do you kind of put that on somebody to nah, make that decision for themselves? That's absolutely a personal decision. I mean, there's people out there that won't pay a dime to avoid foreclosure. Um, There's people out there that I know that are still paying to close, and that's their personal choice. And I applaud them for that, although I don't think it's the right financial decision for them. You know, that's their prerogative. It's what they've, you know, chosen to done and that chosen to do. And that was obviously that was their number, whether that's ten thousand dollars, twenty five thousand dollars or fifty thousand dollars. They felt that moral obligation to do so, especially when a short sale is going to actually hurt your credit. Whether you make your payments up to that point in time or not, typically. Yeah, that's right. So it really is an interesting, you know, you end up with how much is it worth? And a lot of people consider that value in their credit. And if the value of continually making that payment is not only a moral obligation, but it is, a, you know, they're trying to maintain their credit by making their payments consistently. It is. And, you know, if somebody is doing that, you know, and you are looking towards your future, you really can be trapped in a situation and really feel, you know, you feel like you're held hostage by that mortgage just to keep your credit up. And and oftentimes, your I mean, your credit is worth it at some points in time, but, uh, you know, sometimes it just isn't. It's a financial decision. It's a choice people do have to make. And, you know, once again, it, it does come down to, Figuring out where your where your moral obligations are, and we're gonna we're gonna actually talk a lot more about that here uh, when we bring everybody in. Wes, thanks so much for joining us again. Wes Jones of Home Helper Consultants. Um, when we come back, Jane Hodges is gonna be back with us talking a little bit about renting versus owning. Her book that's coming out next month. So if you're interested in uh, learning more about real estate, this is something you can't miss. My name is Ben Brash, and that was Wes Jones. You're listening to Brashonomics.